Honorable Katie Hammond. Um, I'm sure as a member of the House, you are conversant with the annual reports to Parliament of the staff of the presidential office. I'm sure you are conversant with the annual report because all of us parliamentarians are given a copy of yeah, the that, that, report. That, that does not necessarily make you conversant with it. You may have a copy, but you know what I mean. Well, the assumption is that if you are as intelligent as you claim, you will be conversant uh, Mr. with... Chairman, Mr. Chairman, you can, you, can with, you have uh, a discussion with your honorable, colleague over honorable, there? Yeah. That, that, is, that is unparliamentary. Well, but, but Mr. That. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, the nominee must realize that he's before a serious committee. You can do whatever you do with us outside the sitting of the committee. When you come before the committee and you're on national television and everybody is viewing, you must take us serious. I'm asking a question. Let me finish asking the question. And if you have an answer, you can give your answer. If you tell the whole country that you've not been paying attention to the papers that have been given to you, it's up to you. We are working on your nomination and you are interjecting honorable, and, and directing honorable everybody. Member, that's, it's, it's me. I'm supposed to regulate the meeting. So if I'm failing, I'll take responsibility. Please proceed with your question. That's it. The question I, I have, the question I have. I, I, I wanted to uh, repeat what Honorable Ayariga said. Um, at the time of our country, where people are in real difficulty making ends meet, I'm of, I'm of the view that the nominee is very affable, and we all know. But when you are about to take, at least as the president wished, a position as a trade minister, you need to put up a posture that is more serious than being friendly to us. I, 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 I thought, I thought, please, honorable, please, please, I think it's my fault. I should not be allowing this. All right. Now, please continue with your question. I want us to be as strict as possible, and I'm going to apply the rules very strictly. Yeah. Yes, please. So, honorable nominee, the report to Parliament of the presidential staffers for 2021 indicated that there was a total of 337 political appointees. 337 political appointees at the office of the president. 337 political appointees. That is contained in the report that came to Parliament for 2021. I want to find out from you, what work will 337 people be doing at the office of the president? Do you have any idea what work they are doing? Honorable, please. Honorable members, we are guided by our standing orders. If it's a report that is before you, their work and things will be in the report. So for things that are already published are not admissible questions. Please ask another question. Well, you have to show me specifically which provision of our standing orders bar me from, answer, from asking this question. Can we ask another question, please? Chairman, you, no, you have to show no me that. You have to show me a provision in our standard orders that says that I cannot Chair, ask Chairman. him that question. Chairman, I don't remember. This is not a new business we're doing. Please, don't worry. I, I expect that he knows. Is that he knows the rules. He knows what regards questions. So I should not be pointing it out to him, just to the public. But please, I've ruled that you should ask another question, please. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying that I don't know. 
And I'm not embarrassed to say I don't know. So because I don't know, I'm saying that point to the specific provisions that says that when there's a nominee before this committee, I cannot ask him about the workings of the office of the president. I expect a specific provision that says so. Um, uh, Yawa, I'm appointed to 67.1H. A question shall not be asked, the answer to which is readily available in official publications. Mr. Speaker, I refer to that official publication. The, 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 the report, you have it. Everybody has it. Nobody has disputed the fact. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the report just mentions people and then it mentions an office. So, for instance, you have presidential staffer, about 44 people. You have presidential advisor on the economy, presidential advisor on health, presidential advisor on media, presidential advisor on SG, S, SDGs. You have uh, several presidential staff. It just says presidential staffer. Then you have mention of senior presidential aide. Then you have presidential aide. Then you have presidential physician, that I can, I can tell is, is a medical doctor. Then you have special aid to the chief of staff, special aid to the chief of staff, special aid to minister for fisheries and aquaculture development, special assistant to deputy chief of staff, special assistant to the senior presidential advisor, special assistant to the minister for environment, science, technology, and innovation, special advisor to the minister for interior, Special advisor to the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. You said that Mr. Speaker, we all have copies of the report. Yes. Yes. So, so I shouldn't repeat them. Not necessarily. Okay. We have copies. Okay. Can so, I ask so, your question? Yes. So why will, why will special advisor for ministers of state be sitting at the office of the president? Honorable, are you aware... Why they sit at the office of the president? M Mr. Chairman, As please. That what will allow is whether he's aware of that or not. M Mr. Chairman, I'm not aware. Um, but b before I, I, I do, Mr. Chairman, let me, let me put a matter in perspective. Mr. Chairman, I'm aware that we're on live television. I'm not sure I'm trivializing this occasion. Number two, the honorable member from Boko has been a good friend all along. We've always known in the house that he is have a trade. I've never doubted his competence. If he now says that I claim I am brilliant. Honorable, please, can you leave that, that is there? We will, we will, we will, we will I, do I that. I thought I should put that into proper perspective. Thank you very much. Please, leave it there. Can you ask another question, please? He's not aware of what work they are doing. He's not aware of the work they are doing. No, I, I didn't hear his answer. That's why I'm... Honorable, oh, no, can you ask another question? Otherwise, I'll move on. No, oh, okay. Now, Honorable Katie Hammond, the perception is that the size of government is humongous. It's big. It's, it's so big. Given the, the country's financial situation now, do you not think that the president should be reducing the number of ministers that he has now. Is that what you, do you, do you not think? If, if you don't think so far, you can say it, but that's my question. Do you think that the size of government is big and therefore we should be reducing the number of ministerial appointments that we have? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's a point he makes. I think it would be a good idea um, that the president hears of this. And do you think, I'm supposed to ask, ask three questions. Third, yeah, this is my third question. The minority takes a position that 
the president ought not to have made additional appointments, but that he should have realigned and reassigned existing ministers to occupy uh, ministerial portfolios such as the one that you seek to occupy now. Do you have a view on our position? Uh, to start with, I don't know your position, and I'm not so sure I can have a view on it, because I don't know what your position is. I am called here um, to be vetted because uh, the president has uh, nominated me for a position as a uh, uh, minister for um, trade and industry. I'm not sure if in um, the discussions that has just gone on there, you suggest that this portfolio should have been uh, reconfigurated or aligned with the, any other ministry. I, I'm not so sure that's the point you're making. Yeah, well, 